Right now at the box office, the film Inception continues to pull in audiences. The fantasy film, which focuses on dreams, has raked in over a half billion dollars worldwide. But it's a new documentary called The Edge of Dreaming that has grabbed our attention. The film explores the topic, what if our dreams are simply subconscious warnings, and can you do anything to act on it? The filmmaker explores neuroscience, paranoia, and even a grim prediction of her own health. And Amy Hardy joins us now from her home in Scotland. Amy, thank you for talking with us. Very pleased to be here, Emily. Thank you for inviting me. Sure. So, Amy, first tell our viewers the origin of the film. It came from two disturbing dreams you had, correct? Yes. The first thing that happened was that I had a dream about my horse. And that's a very unusual thing for me because I don't normally remember my dreams. Um, I wake up every morning next to my psychotherapist husband and often I look over and he's writing a dream diary, but um, I don't remember my dreams. But this was different. I dreamt that my horse was standing opposite me and he was asking me to take a photograph of him and he um, fell right down into the camera. And I was quite sure when I woke up that he was dead. And that was such a ridiculous thought that I decided to calm myself down by going outside and checking on him. Mm -hmm. But when I went outside um, in the middle of the night, he was lying there dead. And that, wow. And, then, and the wow. second dream that you had involved your deceased partner who came to you in a dream saying that you were going to die. Yeah, I mean, after the, after the first dream, I sort of forgot about it. You know, I, I make science films. I've got a degree in logic. I'm raising three kids. I have a very busy life. And um, I just thought that was an extraordinary coincidence. It was quite a few months later when I had a second dream that the father of my oldest child um, appeared to me in the dream and he had died himself of cancer um, two years previously and he said um, I don't want to tell you this but I think it's better that you know you're going to die when you're 48 mm -hmm. and based on the um, dream based on the dream that you had had about the horse now you're thinking that you have some type of you know, telepathy for these dreams, but you talked about it with your psychoanalyst husband and son, but you kept the news away from your girls. How did you decide who to tell and who not to tell? Because you didn't know for sure if this was actually going to happen. I, um, I told my son immediately, partly because the dream um, had come from his father. And although he was kind of cheerful, when I turned the camera off, he said, don't die, mom. I've had one parent die already. I can't afford to lose you too. And I just realized that telling any of my children was putting them under a huge strain. Mm -hmm. And it was much better that I kept this to myself. Right. Which actually I found really hard. And so you went into, you talked to scientists, doctors. I mean, you did your research on this, including talking to your husband. Um, but. I mean, did it make it worse when you talked to experts about dreams and the fear? Did it make it worse for you? I think what was alarming was finding out how many times dreams get proved right and how often dreams have shown people that they really do have something wrong with them. Very often, uh, um, a symptom of a real illness will come to them in a dream. But it wasn't until I talked to Dr. Professor Mark Solms, who really helped me understand what happens in our brain when we're dreaming. He um, was able to go through the electrochemical activity in particular areas of your brain when you're dreaming. And he, was, he built up a picture that was very convincing for me. It is fascinating. It is Obviously, you did not die. Uh, you celebrated your next birthday. But if you had another dream like the one in the future, do you think that it would have the same effect on your life? 
or would you do things differently? I think it was very important that I took steps to prevent that dream from coming true. I became very ill, which is what the dream predicted. And it was only once I became ill that I really took the dream seriously. And I think what I have learned is that the brain-body connection is very important and layered and is something that I need to know a lot more about. And I started exploring it with Professor Mark Solms. Um, and I think there are a lot of instances of people who have had uh, um, a death sentence and have then died. Their body has, has done what their brain has told it to. And so I think it's, it is actually important to take these things seriously. Okay, Amy, and you did do that, but people have to watch the documentary to see for themselves. Thank you, Amy Hardy, for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And again, the film is The Edge of Dreaming. It airs next Tuesday on PBS. Check your local listings for times. And if you miss it, it will be available on the POV's website into November 24th.